It's your boy Javan and welcome back to the number one place for film photography and motivation and today we're talking about the different modes on the camera now and when to use them. So yes, welcome back ladies and gentlemen. So today we are talking about the different modes on the camera now and when to use them. So let's just first off start off by saying there are seven modes on the camera now and yes I'm gonna be breaking them down one by one and it's saying exactly when and where to use each mode. All right first off we have auto mode. Now auto mode is represented by a green triangle or square and yes yeah, so auto mode this is where all our beginners this is where we're gonna start off just to make it easy. So auto mode for all the beginners and with auto mode it's really gonna control all the variables so there's three variables there's iso there's shutter speed and then there is aperture and these three are called the exposure triangle and as you can continue to go in your photography career you're going to realize that these three are very important in photography but we'll get more to that later on so right now we just need to remember that these three are being controlled for us so we don't have to worry about it Right now, we're just focusing on the composition. So composition, that's gonna be the positioning of the camera or more the positioning of what's in your frame of the camera. So right now, I'm in the middle and then you're gonna decide when you're taking a picture, am I gonna be in the middle? Am I gonna be towards the right? Am I gonna be towards the left? I say it the wrong way around because the camera is reversed, but I'm still gonna carry on. <laughs> so yes, yeah, so it's like, am I gonna be here, here, here? And also how high up or how low I'm gonna be in the image. Because when you angle the camera, it really changes the vibe or the mood for certain pictures. Say like I'm here right now, and then you angle the camera from below me and I'm looking down. It gives you a feeling of like that person's superior. So if you pose the model in a way whilst angling at a low angle, then it really brings off that image of, wow, like they look powerful. Say like there's a man in a suit and he's like got a camera lower than him and he's got like, I don't know, a nice jewelry on, he's got his fist like this and he's looking down. He looks really powerful compared to if you had a man that fully just normal clothes and then he's looking up at the camera, say that the camera's higher than him, and he's looking up at the camera, and he might not necessarily be looking scared, but just looks innocent. The fact that the camera's higher, it just naturally gives that look of they're below you. So that's just an example of how composition works. So yeah, so composition is the main thing you're gonna be thinking about when you first start off. You're gonna be doing it in auto, and focusing on your angles and seeing how different angles work and what it reflects when you're looking back at it, when you're looking back at the picture as well. So yeah, auto mode, focus on composition. So with auto mode, its job, as I said, with the exposure triangle is to really keep the image properly exposed and also to keep the image looking very sharp. So it does this by detecting all three variables and making sure right, the line's right, all right, the speed is at the right speed, all right, how wide does the option need to be to make sure that there's enough light coming in. So it really figures it out. It's really smart to be honest. Like we've come a long way in cameras, but it really figures out all these three variables and then it gives you this crisp image that the average person just pick up the camera, take it and not really realize what this technology is actually doing. That's like, actually amazing to be honest, like really amazing. But yeah, so another thing that it does is at nighttime, so obviously the light's gonna be much darker, isn't it? So what it does, it will detect that there is not a lot of light coming in. And not, no matter at really what you do with the settings, it's still not necessarily gonna be enough light. So what it will do, boop, <laughs> it will bring up the flush. It will say, hey, it's not enough light here. The settings ain't gonna really fix the problem. So, bing, it will just <laughs> sound effects. Yeah, I'm random. You gotta to get to know me in it. So it will do its thing and then it will bring up the flash and then it will take the picture with the flash and then that flash will balance out the lighting or the lack of light. So then it will really give you that image that you want. The thing about flash sometimes, is it could be a harsh light, but that's something we'll get into later on. But right now, we've just gotta know in auto mode at night time, 
if there isn't enough light then it will give you some more light with that flash on top of the camera all right so we're done with auto next up we're going to be looking at program mode so with program mode it's going to be labeled with a p on the camera dial now program mode is more of a laid back auto mode so it's still going to be doing a lot of the heavy lifting but you have few controls to make you feel like you'll get more of a hang on the camera so as we go through the list we're going to realize more and more as we go on we're getting more control more control more control until we hit that that big belly manual mode but um yeah so with program mode we're basically going to be still in auto mode but we're going to have some controls so we can control things like does the flash pop up at night time when there isn't enough light you can turn it off so it doesn't pop up you control things like the iso so you can control the levels of how bright it's going to be but yeah so like 100 is the bar and then above that it goes 200 400 800 and so on and rarely if you go too high you're going to find that the image does get a bit too grainy where it can ruin the picture sometimes you do this on purpose for an effect but it can ruin the picture so you really want to keep an eye on your iso and it also in program mode you can control the white balance as well so you control the temperature of the picture so you get a bit more control you're still being like spoon fed a little bit but you're getting a bit more control you're getting a bit more used to it getting a bit more of a feel of the camera so whilst in this mode if you turn the dial at the top or at the back of the camera depending on your makeup model then you will actually be able to go into program plus mode now program plus mode you have the iso at a constant level and you're able to change the aperture and the shutter speed so it already gives you a chance to play around with the aperture and shutter speed as you go from negative direction to a positive direction so you're really gonna once again get more control so it's really spoon feeding you to get more and more control as we go along so now we're getting a bit more juicy mate we're getting a bit more juicy so now we're talking about aperture priority now aperture priority this is the camera lens eye and it's going to be how wide it is or how closed it is so it works in f-stops so we, for example we start from f 1.8 which is a very wide lens and this is going to mean there's a lot of light coming in and it's going to be a shallow depth of field so like say i'm um, say my eyes are the camera lens then with f 1.8 you can only see from like here so right here this is going to be very in focus my hand's going to be very in focus whereas if my hand was here in f 1.8 then it's going to be a bit blurred whereas if you go into the other spectrum and you go at f12 then you're going to be able to go much further and it's still going to be in focus as more of the image is more focused when you're in a larger number f-stop so when f-stops the lower numbers means the camera eye is wider and then the higher numbers means the camera eye is smaller so for example when i'm doing my landscapes then i'll have a high number so then there's a further depth of field so the whole image is very sharp whereas if i was doing a landscape and i did it in 1.8 then it wouldn't be a great picture because there will be not it would be pretty blurred it wouldn't be very sharp so you have to remember like if you want to take a picture of a model and it's 1.8 and they're right in front of you this will get a nice picture because now the model is nice and crisp nice and sharp in focus she's the center of attention or he's the center of attention and then the background is going to be blurred out so it really draws your attention to their face so yeah when you're talking about aperture you're talking about the f-stops so with this you are controlling the aperture how wide or shallow the depth of field is and the camera will do the iso for you and it'll do the shots for you so if you're going to have a wide angle so you're going to have a 1.8 for example so you're going to have the shot speed very fast because it doesn't need a lot of time to take in a lot of light because it's wired already so there's a lot of light coming into it so if it was a slow shutter speed with a lot of light then it's going to be so bright so where it's got a wide aperture then you're going to have a fast shutter speed to compensate for that light so it's still balanced and then the ISO will be much lower because there's a lot of light coming in anyway so in aperture priority mode there's something called auto iso now if you go to the menu you can set auto iso and what it does is it sets a minimum shutter speed so if you are taking pictures 
and for whatever reason the shutter speed needs to go to a certain range it wouldn't go too slow so then the image becomes blurred it will just stick at that minimum that you've set it at this is great for low light settings when you probably have a wider aperture to let in more light but the shutter speed would want to be very slow to allow more light in also but if the shutter speed does go too slow then you're going to have a very blurred dark picture because yeah it's just not going to work mate it's not going to work <laughs> so in a low light setting this is where the auto ISO comes in handy so obviously in low light you're going to probably have a wider aperture to let in more light but then what's going to happen the shutter speed is also wanting to go lower to allow more light in so when the shutter speed remember with shutter speed say like it opens lets in light and shuts so with a fast shutter speed it'll go boom 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 with a slow shutter speed it'll go boom boom so when it's like that it's letting in all the light letting in all the light and then it shuts and then it processes it in the camera but then if it's dark and then you open for a long time say you're holding the camera when you're holding the camera if it's open like that it's gonna detect that little that little movement you're making, you're thinking, oh, it's not too bad. When you look at the image afterwards, like, what is that? So it does make a big difference. So you need a shutter speed at the right speed to allow for a good picture. So yeah, you will just use that auto ISO and then you'll set it at a minimum range where even at this minimum, it's still gonna be good speed to catch a sharp image. So next up, we have shutter priority. Now shutter priority is labeled with an S or a TV on the camera dial. If you're taking pictures of a football match, if you're taking pictures of a race, then this is gonna be perfect for your photography. Yeah, so what you're gonna do, if you do have a race or a football match coming up, you're just gonna slap the camera dial into shutter speed priority, and then you're gonna shoot, I'll say about 1 800th of a second is like a good starting point, and then from there you can adjust it accordingly. But 1 800th of a second, you're gonna start off there, and then the ISO is going to be judged for you and the aperture is going to be judged for you so it's going to judge how bright it needs to make the ISO it's going to judge how wide or sharp it needs to make the aperture so it's going to still be a crisp image so it's not just football matches or races that you're going to be using the shutter speed in you can also go to the other end of the spectrum now other end of the spectrum is going to be 30 seconds longer than that and then this is where you're going to use it for night photography yeah, night photography. You get some beautiful, beautiful, beautiful images with slow shutter speed in night photography. So once again, the aperture and the ISO will be judged for you. So you'll probably have a wider aperture in night photography just to let in that more light and the ISO will probably be bumped up as well. Next up, we have the daddy of the mall. <laughs> we have manual mode. Don't be scared now, because manual mode, by the time you get to this point, You'd have done aperture priority, you'd have done shutter speed priority, you'd have obviously done auto. So you've definitely got your way around the camera, you know about composition, you know how shutter speed works, you know how aperture works. So now you're just going to be doing the full range yourself. Because most cameras, if not all cameras, all cameras I've used anyway, when you're doing the priority modes, it will show you on the camera how the other two settings are being changed. So what you're gonna do, always keep an eye on the other two. So yeah, you're controlling the aperture, or yeah, you're controlling the shutter speed, but keep an eye on the other two variables to see how it works. So when you have a fast shutter speed, what does it do to the ISO? What does it do to the aperture? Same with the aperture, when you're doing the aperture wide, when you're doing the um, narrow, what does it do to the shutter speed? What does it do to the ISO? So always be focusing on that before you get to the point of manual mode, and this will make manual mode so much more easier. This is why I did. It makes it so much more easier you have a full understanding of what exactly is happening and now it's your turn now it's your turn to try all the settings and have a bit of fun man remember it's not scary man it's not scary don't be scared like manual mode is fun man because you really have full control if anything it's, it's more fun it's more fun than the rest of the modes i find it so yeah don't be scared man don't be scared <laughs> so here's a couple of examples i'll give you to have an idea of how you shoot in manual mode so for example, if I shoot in a football match, I'll have my f-stop at 2.8, I'll have my shutter speed at 1 800th of a second, and I'll have my ISO, if it's a cloudy day, I'll have it on like 200, so ISO 200. So let me give you another example. So say I'm taking a picture of a landscape, say it's a decent day, like sunny, cloudy, 
in between and say that you've got a field you've got trees on one side and you've got a nice landscape in, in the main frame of the picture so what I'll do I'll have it on single shot I'll give it the f-stop I want it to be between f8 and f16 so I get a decent range of field but I'll just play about with the range of the f-stops I'll set the ISO to 100 you want it as low as possible just so you get that crispness remember what I said about the graininess as you go higher in the ISO so you want to have a lower ISO as possible and a shutter speed I have it between a 1 for a second or down to like 3 seconds like because I'll be using a tripod more time I'll be using a tripod so down to 3 seconds just to even let in a bit more light but it all depends like each scene you go to you're going to find it all depends but that's just an example of what I'll do for one scenario of a landscape picture now next up we have user settings now user settings you probably usually get at least two of course <laughs> so you get at least two user settings some cameras have three but yeah so you really want to have each user setting set for a different task so if you do sports and you do models and you do landscape so that's three settings so user one could be sports, user two could be the models, and user three can be the landscapes. So obviously each of these different areas of photography will require different settings. So you can have it each in each one, and then when you're doing the actual pictures on the day, you're just gonna tweak it a little bit. Rather than have to change all the settings, you say, all right, cool, user three, boom. And then just tweak it a little bit, depending on the scenario that you're in and how you need to change it to make it perfect for that image. And last but not least, you're going to have the preset mode. And our preset mode is usually always associated with different pictures for each preset. And I'll give you a few examples. So first up, we're going to have macro mode. And macro mode is usually represented by a flower. And macro mode, if you're not sure, is basically a close-up for pictures. So if you're taking pictures of like insects, or if you're taking pictures of flowers, then it's going to give you a nice, really good-looking, crisp picture of that flower or of that insect. Next up on the dial you may find a mountain and the mountain represents a landscape photography. Next up after that you could even see a person running like a little, no, no, little free frame <laughs> and then that's going to represent sports so it's going to represent anything to do with sports and then it'll be mainly like higher shutter speed and stuff like that. One thing to point out though is that the preset mode is usually found on more entry level cameras for example my camera the z6 this camera doesn't have that preset mode but on the entry level because more of a more something like to play with so like play with the different modes to see how this works to see how that works so as you remember with my d3300 video that camera did have the different modes on it with the presets but more the more professional cameras you're not going to find the presets on there, you're more going to just find the user settings and then the other settings as well. And that's it man, I hope you learned something new today, taking this information in. If you didn't already catch everything, go back and watch it again. But yeah, make sure you experiment with all the modes. So even if you've had it for a while, go back to auto mode, experiment in that. Just take pictures of anything, honestly, even your cat, you see my pictures of my cat, just take pictures of anything man, he's my first model. But yeah, take pictures of your cat, your parents, your friends your siblings, everyone just take pictures, different angles, different poses, really, really practice, man. Practice honestly makes better. It doesn't make perfect. <laughs> practice makes better. So get out there and get them pictures, man. Get them pictures. But yeah, man, as you're out and about, always have your camera with you and just try all the different modes. So you're gonna try shutter priority, try aperture priority, try the manual mode and all the others. But really get to grips with your camera understand that try all the settings you don't like you need to know everything what your camera does like fully dive deep into your camera like it's a piece of you you know what I mean? your camera they see your camera they see you you know what i mean they see you they see your camera like your camera is a piece of you so really dive deep with your camera and get used to it because it's going to be you know what i mean your, your armor mate you know what i mean your armor like, <laughs> you gotta have your camera with you all the time man all the time so yeah, we come to the end of the video make sure you hit that like button comment to let me know anything useful you've learned in this video about the camera dial make sure you subscribe to see more videos on this topic photography that i love and i would love to share all about with you guys 
and share to let the good people know where the best place is for film photography and motivation. For now, stay up, stay blessed, and as always, let's get it! We gone, boys!